Hey guys, I'm Sage Valentine and I'm back here to review the final episode of CBS's Big Brother season 20. This is episode number 40, so let's just get down to it. So Tyler won the first part of the final HOH competition. Casey won the second part of the final HOH competition. JC assumed that whoever won the third part would look upon him and take him to the final two. I knew that was not going to happen. Honey, your time is up. Your check has been cashed and cleared. Your paper has been shredded. You got used and they sent you straight to the jury house. So Tyler and Casey ended up battling one another to win that final part of the HOH competition and it was close until they made it to the tiebreaker and Casey won because she said 3,000 and something and um, Tyler said like 2,002 or something to that effect. So let's talk all about Dr. Will's jury segment, a segment that I've been waiting for all season long because I love Dr. Will and this segment is always messy and you know I am all here for it. So Dr. Will asked the jurors, listen, who do you think is going to be the seventh jury member? Some people said JC, some people said Angela. When Angela walked onto the set, everybody was surprised to see her. Well, Angela revealed that JC put her up on the block. Casey won the veto and she chose Tyler. She talked about Tyler's final two deal with Casey and all about level six and how Tyler controlled level six and Casey rode his coattails. Angela said that Casey had a good social game. She won all those vetoes, but she never used them. Angela said that she does not respect Casey as a player and she never made any big moves in her opinion. Talk about a bit of juror. Mm. Haley believes that Casey made the best move by not using those vetoes because in doing so, it did not benefit her game because level six remained in power. Bailey said, you know what? What if her move was bringing you, Angela, along and letting you take the hits and then voting you out? Where was the lie? I mean, she is kind of right if you think about it. Angela took a lot of hits and Casey kind of stayed in the background and was kind of buffered from those hits. Sam says, that's exactly what they did to you. You were lulled into a sense of security. Again, no lies detected, none. Wow. Rockstar said that Casey floated and that JC was the best player because JC was running things. JC thought that he was running things. Fessy got played by JC, and he was upset about that, but he said, you know what, this is Big Brother, and that's how it works. JC won one competition. Brett said that was impressive because JC was able to float along, win one competition, and remain safe. Bailey sees Tyler as a better player than JC because they all took shots at Tyler, and he still made it to the end. He had a better game than JC. Brett feels betrayed. He said that he's good at reading people usually, but Tyler played him. And then I think that means that you're not very good at reading people. Yeah. So as I said before, Casey won part three of the final HOH competition and she made the decision to take Tyler to the end with her. Despite the fact that JC tried to convince her that taking Tyler with her was a more risky move. No, it wasn't because I still believe that Casey would have won against JC. Casey didn't piss anybody off, see. Tyler and JC did, but we'll talk about what Tyler did a little bit later as I continue on with this review. So JC's final interview with Julie Chen, man, he was just hopped up on caffeine and kind of bouncy and he said he came to play and he said let him play a dirty game and he was loyal defending Tyler and he revealed that he was high off caffeine and he said 
loyalty over everything because Julie Chen tried to ask him, okay, who are you going to vote for or who are you rooting for or something to that effect. And he said loyalty over everything, which made me realize, yeah, he's going to vote for Tyler. So pretty much the jury will decide who wins, obviously. And the first seven jurors learn that the final juror is JC, and Haley and Brett both guessed that it would be. Everybody was surprised by this, though. Julie explained what happened and how Casey and Tyler ended up being the final two. So we get to the question portion for the finalists, meaning Casey and Tyler. Now, they said three questions, but this looks like it's more than three questions. But anyway, I'm going to get through it as fast as I possibly can. Haley asked Tyler, aside from winning competitions, what were the biggest strategic moves you made to get you to the final two? Tyler said he knew he would have to have a following, so he created an alliance. He had JC protect him against the other side, meaning Falte slash the Hive. He had Casey within the alliance to protect him, and Sam was outside as a wild card. The first week, he made some crazy moves. He got a power app. He had to talk himself into being backdoored, even though he knew he was safe via the power app, a.k.a. the cloud. Brett asked Casey, your physical game was clearly strong, but aside from comp wins, what were the best strategic moves you made specifically in this game? She said she came to this game with a strategy and a plan, and number one, her social game would take her far. She was about to finish, and Julie Chen was like, honey, we don't have that much time. Like, can you kind of wrap it up? So... Or keep it short and simple. So Bailey had a chance to ask Tyler a question. I was cracking up because I was saying of all the people to ask Tyler and they had Bailey do it. So many of us in the jury had a sour taste in our mouths because of you on our evictions. Tell us why we shouldn't. Tyler went straight out and apologized to Bailey and he said that he had good relationships with everyone not with everyone he needed to make an enemy on the jury and he made it about game with her and he thinks she's an amazing person and i'm just like now it's coming back to bite you in the butt when you said that you didn't need bailey's vote via jury right mm. then angela <laughs> As Casey, level six was a powerful alliance in this game. We know you won veto and kept nominations the same. Tell us another layer to your game that we are not aware of. Honey, that was so shady. Come on now. Who was the most bitter juror? Definitely Angela. Definitely. People say it's Bailey, but nah, I'm getting it more from Angela than anybody else. Casey said that having a relationship with the other side of the house was another layer to her game. Sam asked Tyler, why do you think you deserve to win over the person sitting next to you, meaning Casey? He said that he deserves to win because he had a good relationship with everyone. Why does he keep saying that? No, he didn't have a good relationship with everybody. No. He always knew what was going to happen and had a plan in place. He was behind the scenes making moves and he's been a super fan. Now think about JC hearing this and hearing Tyler say that he was making moves and all this stuff. Not once did he mention that he was working with JC when he answered this question. Think about that. Just think about it. I know JC was thinking about it. Scotty is the one who asked Casey a question and he said, why do you deserve to win over Tyler? Casey said that she wanted to make relationships with everyone, wanted to make sure they were good, especially the people on the other side or people who were nominated and were about to be evicted because she felt like they were human beings. Casey's, um, her answers and her speeches always end up being garbled because she seems like the type of person that gets really nervous when they speak in front of people, like in front of a group of people, and it becomes all garbled. So now I'm starting to understand what's going on with Casey. So we get to the final speeches. Casey said, you know what, it's a dream come true. Her social game, she used that to her advantages. She had level six plus JC and they played a very loyal game and she stayed true to herself and she was only herself. I feel for JC and I know you guys are like, 
after all that you said about JC, I'm just like, yeah. On a personal level, I'm just like, mm. So pretty much these people just told JC, you know what, we both used you. And then we tossed you away. One thing on the side note before I finish this. At least the first seven jury members were able to stew in their emotions and, you know, calm down and really deal with what happened. Even Angela was able to deal with it. JC had to be in the final three, get thrust out the house and sent straight to jury and really didn't have enough time to fully, like, grasp what the hell just happened. How he was that close to first and second place and then lost. Wow. Tyler's speech, to get back on track, was pretty much that he knew that he was going to be a target the moment he walked in because he, quote, fit the surfer dude profile. Because if you remember correctly, and I do, quite a few of the surfer dudes were the first people voted out. So Tyler was literally the first surfer dude who lasted a very long time in this game and had a chance to win Big Brother. He said that he had to keep his super fandom a secret. He knew that keeping Sam and keeping her safe, basically lulling her into a false sense of security and acting like he had her back would essentially get her to help him out, especially after he found out that she had a power app. I feel for Sam too, because Sam was definitely used. He said that he had a power that lasted till day 69. He told Bailey, he lied when he told her this, that Scotty was his number one. And he said that backdooring Brett was his biggest move. Mm. So, we made it to this little showman segment that was so messy. Big Brother, you guys are so messy and so petty. And I'm just, you know, the petty meter goes up every single year. They always manage every year to up the ante. And you sure did it this year. Angela and Tyler, Fessy and Haley, Bailey and Swaggy were the three big showmances in the house. Some were secret, some were not. But they were the three big showmances of the season. Angela and Tyler always seemed to me like they were kind of put together so that Big Brother could get some more ratings because a lot of people had just jumped ship completely from the show. Me personally, I didn't jump ship because I've been watching this since I was 15, so... Um, it's just not going to change. Even if I don't watch it live, I'm probably going to end up watching it, like binge watching it or something on the days when I have to do something else. But, um, whatever happens with them outside the house, fine, but it just seemed kind of iffy to me. Fessy and Haley, I don't know either. We'll see in the months to come. Bailey and Swaggy. They are the showmans that spent the least time together. They talked about each other a lot. Swaggy talked about Bailey a lot on social media. Bailey talked about Swaggy a lot in the house. When Swaggy got up to ask her to marry him, I was just like, he's really going to do this on finale night. He's just going to overshadow everything that's about to happen on finale night and as i watched him walk across the stage towards her i'm like yeah he's about to do something and i knew right then he was going to ask her but then i was like nah maybe not and then when he finally got on one knee i'm just like he's really asking this woman to marry him after knowing her for 23 days mm. big brother always says expect the unexpected they're right about that they're definitely right about that. As for if their relationship will continue, God only knows. I'm just going to keep my ear to the street, so to speak, and listen out to see what's going to happen. There's a rumor, a big rumor going around that if you watch Swaggy C's Instagram stories, I don't know if it's still there because Instagram stories, they stay up for like 24 hours or something like that, then they disappear. Anyway, he's showing off this little book of letters that 
Bailey wrote to him and he wrote to Bailey and somebody did some investigative work because somebody has a hell of a lot of time on their hands and a hell of a lot of patience to slow it down and enlarge things enough to be able to read things. But anyway, somebody claims they saw a letter saying something about Bailey being pregnant. The one thing that I hope didn't happen because there were a lot of people on social media talking about, well, Bailey's going to get pregnant. Bailey's going to get pregnant and using it as their way of saying, if you get where I'm going, because I'm not going down that road. But yeah, that's the rumor that's going around. And I kind of hope it's not true. But if it's true, then mazel tov. And good luck to all the showmances. Once you guys see all these tapes and everything and hear what everybody else had to say, I want to see how it's going to go, so I'm going to hold my judgment as of right now. But anyway, when it came down to the final vote, Tyler received four votes from JC, Angela, Brett, and Haley. I know I was surprised that Haley gave him a vote, but then... I'm not that surprised, though, because maybe Haley felt some type of way about being put on the block by Casey and Casey not saving her, and I don't blame her for that. Casey got votes from Sam, Scotty, Fessy, and Rockstar, and it came down to Bailey. Was she going to choose Tyler, or was she going to choose Casey? And all I could think of in my head was Tyler saying, after Bailey got upset and said, you don't have my vote or you lost my vote, I don't need your vote. Something to that effect, honey. He needed her vote because she cast a vote for Casey and Casey won the half million dollars. Honestly, when it came down to it and it came down to the final four, I knew that Casey was going to win. If you want me to be <laughs> real with you, from day one when I saw Casey's first interview with Ross Matthews, I said, you know what, she has a chance, she has a shot of winning, she seems to have a good personality, and she's athletic. I had a feeling that she was going to be in this game for a long time. But I did not want to outwardly root for anybody because I always feel like if I outwardly root for somebody, I'm going to jinx said person. So that's why this season I was like, you know what? I have no favorites. That's it. But as the season progressed and Casey was still in her boat Moving forward and forward and forward, I'm just like, Casey's going to be here for a bit. When they came down to the final four and Angela was voted out, I'm like, yeah, Casey is going to win if she takes JC, if she takes Tyler. It doesn't matter who she takes. Casey was going to win. And she did just that. And apparently Tyler was voted as America's favorite player and he won $25,000 and a lot of people are calling BS and I'm just like, I'm not surprised that he was crowned that. I mean, Big Brother no longer surprises me with the stuff that they do. <laughs> they no longer surprise me and the fans don't surprise me either. After watching this show for 19 years... Nothing is surprising with Big Brother. The one thing I would like to leave you guys with, and if anybody from Big Brother or CBS is watching, um, season 21 should be an all-star season. And if it's not an all-star season, I hope the rumors about Tyler returning in 21 are not true because I really don't want to have to like go through another Paul situation because I could see history repeating itself. I feel like the cast should be a little bit more diverse. As for having a black person, particularly a black woman, win Big Brother, I mean, in order to do that, you're going to need a player who can really, like, sidestep stuff and really, really take it all the way to the end and not be targeted from the beginning because that's how it is when it comes to black players. It's just the nature of the beast. Um, other than that, I don't know how season 21 is going to be, but 
right now i'm vowing to review season 21 unless something comes up and i'm unable to do it as frequently as i want then i'll just do like once a week get caught up and do a once a week type thing but yeah i'm gonna review season 21 and i will be back to review cbs's celebrity big brother season two because i love celebrity big brother and i'm gonna take a little bit of a time off so to speak and i'll be back to review amc's the walking dead season nine because season nine is going to be epic in my opinion yes i still watch the walking dead i do i'm a big fan of the show and the comics so until then you all take care thank you guys so much for tuning in every single week three times a week and bearing with me this past week because everything was so busy and i Last night I had to watch Empire and Star and American Horror Story. It's just a lot. And I say, you know what, I'm going to take it down a notch. But congratulations, Casey. And congrats to the cast of season 20. And good luck to the cast of season 21 because it's going to be rough. And shout out to the upcoming cast of Celebrity Big Brother. It's going to be a hot mess. And I'm all here for it. I love you guys. And for the Walking Dead fans, see you October 7th. Love you guys. Bye guys. Love you all. Bye. <laughs>